And I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. You know, uh, this is hard science, okay? Um, a cardiologist, a very well-known cardiologist named Redford Williams is at Duke University, not a sloppy place, right? How many of you are from North Carolina? All right. So you know, it's a great place. And he did something really interesting. See, for about 70 years in America, whenever you want to become a pastoral counselor, when you want to become a psychologist or a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse, you have to take this crazy test that some of you have taken. It's called the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. Ooh, ugly language, MMPI. Anybody heard of it? You've taken it, right? So what did Redford Williams do? He picked out the 50 questions out of hundreds and hundreds of questions that he thought were most associated with hostility, uh, quickly enraged, um, agitated, unforgiving, aggressive, unthankful. And he called this the hostility scale. Then he went back and he looked at people in 1950 who took the Minnesota inventory at the age of 25 years of age. And guess what? 25 years old. Here's the outcome. By the time those people were 50 years old, okay, so that's to say looking at 1975, in the top fourth of people who were most hostile, 20% were dead by age 50. They were dead by age 50. And the ones who were in the lowest fourth on hostility, only 2% were dead by age 50. That's amazing, isn't it? And his conclusion is that hostility, uh, resentment, these things are like acid on metal. And over time, over the course of a lifetime, they really do damage to the body. Uh, many of these people died of coronary diseases, but they also died of other stress-related illnesses. And so in that sense, then, uh, we can say that anger kills. OK. Let me give you another little image here. Who's from Minneapolis? Some of you? OK, great. Well, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, there were a group of nuns. And they became generous. They decided they would leave their brains to science. When they died, their brains were autopsied by individuals who were researching Alzheimer's disease. By the way, it's OK to forget where you parked your car. It's just not OK to forget that you have a car that's parked. OK? <laughs> so I don't want you to get nervous when I say these words. All right. So what happened was they followed these women for years. And it turns out, when they went back and looked at the essays that these women had written when they were young girls applying into this order of nuns, the ones who had the most positive emotional language, gratitude, forgiveness, kindness, those individuals were outliving by six to eight years those who, in fact, in their entrance essays, had no such positive emotional language. So that's really outstanding science, and it appeared in one of the best uh, uh, peer-reviewed journals in America. Let me give you one more vignette. Harvard researchers. Anybody from Boston? All right, for Boston. You must be Red Sox fans, right? OK. I do like the Indians. <laughs> I do like the Indians. Uh, Harvard researchers looked at individuals in nursing homes. And what they did was they took a subject group, and they gave them an opportunity not just to be relatively free, talk about free life, free to make certain decisions on their own in terms of scheduling, what they want to eat. But they also gave them positive, generous responsibilities, things like taking care of plants, watering the plants, uh, helping one another in small, generous ways. And guess what? Those who were helping others had a reduced mortality rate over five years. They actually had a 50% reduction in death rates. And so there's something about giving that's good. That's why I began by saying it's good to be good, and science says it's so.